theyeshiva.net. Page 36, the first column, or Daf Yud Ches Amud Gimel, Yud Ches, column 3. The line starts, Shup, you see Shup, Belosh Yiddish. It's like a little, a little smaller, smaller font. In the middle of the page, 36. Oh, so that's not the Haggah? Uh, no, the Haggah was... Uh, Where did the parentheses start and finish in this Haggah? Just, just the Haggah began on column 2 of page Yud Ches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 lines from the top. There's a parenthesis and it says Haggah. Oh, I see. And then there's a parenthesis within a parenthesis. There's within a parenthesis. By Achleos Gilom as Ogashman. And it ends, right, the line starts, At Khan Haga. At Khan Haga. Yeah, and then Achlios is back to the original minor. Okay, so a few lines down, almost the middle of the page, the line starts, Shup, Belosh and Yiddish. You see, Oyla Mamagim, Lamaila, Maila. So we have reflected on the two types of souls which sometimes, of course, exist within each within one soul as well, different times, different stages, different chapters of life, different situations, different circumstances, different aspects. The soul is not one-dimensional. But generally, there's two categories of tzaddikim. One are defined as levyasans, and the others as shayr habars, shayr habars. Levyasan represents those souls whose avoid is primarily internal, concealed, dealing with ruchnius, spirituality, transcendence. It's internal avayda, as he calls it, yichudim, aliyos, and uh, who live really in the world of the waters, meaning submerged completely in the source of life, like the levyasan. The word levyasan means his chabrus. There's always a sense of, of connection, of intimacy, from which they will not leave like fish will not leave from the water in the famous metaphor of Rabbi Akiva and Meseches Brachas. Not only will it not uh, leave the water, it will not even go on top of the water. It will be completely submerged in the water. There's a certain connection that is very, very profound in a v- visible way. And that's what the Leviathan represents. And the way the movement happens, the movement growth, is like similar to the fish, where fish can cover huge spans, huge spans of, of space, of territory within the water, at a tremendous speed. And he says similar, the nimshal as well, just as it is in the metaphor, the movement, the motion of these types of souls, since it's spiritual, since it's ruchnius, so with ein shup, with ein swoop, they can ascend to very high spaces. There's a certain swiftness in their avoida because it's all, it's, it's extremely internal. It's very, very, um, so the movements are so powerful and the movements are so swift. And that's what he says, that this is very different. It's much different. The tisa achas, with one, one flight, they can reach to places where the other tzaddikim will not because they are more, they're dealing with physical things, physical reality, which is simply operates in a completely different realm. Just like you can't compare the fish in the water, the amphibious creatures to those in dry land. So let's see now, Weiter, further inside. Um, okay. The Ein Zeklal, you see the line starts, Shup in Yiddish. It's not in the style, it's not in the fashion of the Hislavus, the fire, the passion, the hot blood, the intensity of which characterizes the avoid of the tzaddikim who focus on the material world, who are dealing much more with material world. That's the arena in which they operate. And here, there's also the joy, but it's the joy with the flesh, and it's the joy with the wine. And flesh and wine represents also spiritually a fire and a passion. This is like amphibious creatures, 
with cold blood, or benachas, with a certain serenity, tranquility, quietness, or betisa achas, with one flight, magiyim lamayla mayla, they can reach high, 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 and not very noticeable. It's not dramatic. When the animal in the jungle is pursuing its prey, it's very dramatic. It's very dramatic. You could see the the fire in the eyes of the cheetah and the eyes of the tiger and the eyes of the lioness. Lahavdil. The dog, there's something, something very quiet about it, even though it's a pretty action oriented place. But you know, when we look at it, when you look at the fish, there's like a certain what's called anachas. There's no uh, you don't see a lot. On the external level, it doesn't look like. There is a lot going on, but it's, on a different, it's in a different realm. And the nimshal for that is that there are creatures, there are souls that operate in that space, like under the water, beneath the radar. And the movements are very, very huge. But it's all, it's all, it's all bepnimius. The Balatanya says, this is maybe the most important line of the Maimer, there's no way to explain this through words. Eich, how, and what it is. So even though he's explaining, he says at the end, this was of course said, this wasn't written. It was written from what was said. So he said, meaning that words will ultimately not capture what we're really addressing. And as a result of that, as a result of that, despite the miracles, Reb Shimon Bayechai did not have to fulfill in the cave many of the aspects of the mitzvahs that you need maisa, you need action. So you could say, well, he didn't have them. She says, that's not the pshat. The pshat is, he fulfilled the mitzvahs, but not physically. All on a spiritual level. So yes, it comes Shabbos and Yom Tov, you have to make Kiddush on wine. I can't make Kiddush Baruch Nis. The Takanas Chazal was to make Kiddush, or even Midar Reis, according to some Shittas and some Achleikas, if the wine is Midar Reis, most say it's Midar Abonon, but Kiddush is Minat but the wine is not necessarily Minat Okay, But that's a separate chakla of If you need wine, Minat you don't need wine. According to most Paiskim, you don't need wine. You make Kaddish, you do Kiddush verbally. But there's many mitzvahs, whether it's Medrabanan or Minatayra, they obviously couldn't do. So the Simcha Bebasa and the Yayin wasn't there. In the, in the, in the, in the Mayra, there was Baksa, there was a, uh, a, uh, a carob tree, a carob tree. Uh, it grew for him, right? Atazot. Could have got grown for him also, yeah, yeah. Chitim sheyardu ba'avim. Yeah. In this philosophic system, does this have anything to do with what the Avos did before Matan? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we spoke about it. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you need the box for, Ah, uh, sas for tu for tu bishvat. A min a minig? You don't miss a minig. Ah, a minig comes she comes into the mesoida. Your mother's gonna kill you. You don't need boxer to be shvat, your mother will have your head. That should be a trick, Gata Mama. What's meant to be? So, if you saw no splendid. No, it says that it was created. The Gemara in Shabbos says a spring of water. Well, on a practical level, that was to physically live. He wasn't on a shama beyond the guf. There's still an achilah or siya. Especially, we spoke about what the kavana of achilah is. What we're drinking and drinking. We spoke in the Maim of Parshish Tzav, Vachal Tamocha. About the whole food chain and food web spiritually. We spoke, so, uh, we spoke all the time that the body that's in the earth is, is the opposite. Is death. And I seem to remember that they didn't have to he, preserve their clothes and they covered themselves. He was in the earth. Very good. That's a very good horror. Rashbi in the cave was similar to a fish in water in the sense that he was mamish in the earth till. till uh, the Gemara says, till above, uh, till above the shoulders. They didn't have clothes. They were mamish in the earth, which is how his skin was affected. His skin was affected, and uh, when he came to Repinchus, when he left, after 13 years, he came to see his father-in-law, Repinchus ben Yoyer, right? 
And uh, Rabbi Pinchas Bajari saw his son-in-law. And he started to cry. He started to cry and the tears came down on his body. And uh, Rabbi Shimon Ben Yechai was extremely... Uh, because of all the years, it was extremely dry, yeah. And he said, Oi, oi, what's the lush in there? Uh, oi, did I see you like this, right? Oi, li, shiri, isicha bekach. Oi, li, woe to me, shiri, bekach. So Rashbi said, woe, woe, if you didn't see me this way. The Gemara says that before, every question, he can answer 12 answers. And now, every question, he answered 12, 24 answers. In other words, right? 24 answers, yeah? Shabbos Lamed Gimel, the Kukhtan. Right there. Like the Boxer tree. Usually with the Gemara that you're looking for is never here. So you're saying an interesting aura that he was in the, in, in the earth, which is usually a sign of, of after 120 years. Right? Lamed Gimel, Lamed Beis, yeah. Israchish Nisa. It was a miracle. There was a charuv, a charuv, a carob tree, and an ena demaya, and a spring of water. They sat till their necks in sand. They were daven, the Gemara says, 12 years, and then the thir- 13th year. After 13 years, they come out. I got some ice, and zacher, and shamer. So there's an interesting, interesting piece here. When the Pinchas ben Yair, his father-in-law, hears about it, he comes to see him. He goes to greet him. And the Pinchas ben Yair sees that because of the sand, so many years, so there was like Rashi says, like, uh, you know, I guess wrinkles or cracks, you know, shriveled in the skin from the, from the sand, 13 years in sand. So have a So the Pinchas started to cry. The kanasrud moyus ene, and the tears fell. The kometzavchale, so Reb Shimon Bar Yechai started to scream. He started to scream. Rashi says, "Why did he scream?" The mother's Rashi says, "Because the tears are salty, and when they touch the wounds, it was very painful." So he started to scream. Amalei, and he says, "Oily shiri sicha bekach." Woe unto me that I see you this way. So Shem Ben Yechai says, Ashrecha shiri sini bekach. You're fortunate that you see me this way. If you would have not seen me this way, you would have not found in me what you found in me. In the beginning, when Shem Ben Yechai would ask a question, Reb Pinchas Ben Yoye would answer 12 answers. Now when Reb Pinchas Ben Yoye would ask a question, Reb Shem Ben Yechai would answer 24 answers. Thus is the Maisa. I was at a Siyam Hashas a few weeks ago on Sunday, two or three weeks ago on Sunday, of a Jew here in Munsi, a vision of Chassid, his name is Rabbi Ram David Weiss, who has ALS for many years, and he made a Siyam Hashas. The whole Shas he learned with his eyes on a computer, with Chavrusas who come in every day, and this was his third Siyam Hashas. The whole Shas learned in this state, I visit him, uh, so his wife invited me to the Siam. Uh, it was in Passaic, New Jersey. He was sitting there. You know, he has Lagarics for quite a few years. He was a young man when he got it in his 40s. And uh, he pushed it, finished the whole shas in that state. Literally the whole shas, from brachas all the way till the end, with chavrusas. And he took tests. He took tests. It wasn't some, uh, you know, learning. All with his eyes, of course. That's the only thing that moves. But his head is very clear. And uh, so I was at the Sea of Masha, so Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Schlesinger, Rabbi Sol David Schlesinger, Schlitter, from, the, from here for months, he spoke. So he said over this Gemara, and he said that he always wondered, why didn't Rabbi Sherman Yechai scream for 13 years? <laughs> if his body... If his body was in this situation, probably without tears, it was also quite painful. So Punk when Rapinchas Ben Yoy started to cry, that's when Rapshim Ben Yechai started to scream. And when Rapinchas Ben Yoy was being empathetic and said, Oh, I'm so sorry. He says, What are you sorry for? What are you so far sorry? So he said, 
I don't know if he heard it from somewhere or if he read it somewhere, but he said that perhaps the, the Pshat and the Gemara is when Rav Shimon Yechai says, Oy li sheri sicha bekach. Amaloi, oy li sheri sicha bekach. Woe unto me that I see you this way. That's what he was saying. That's what Rav Shimon ben Yechai was pained by. He was pained by the fact that Rav Pinchas ben Yoyer looked at him as though he was a uh, like a, a nebach, a nebach case. Like, yeah, like, you know, what a debilitated, pathetic creature who went through so much and life has been so miserable and has no life and has no joy and even has no body left. And he looked at him and he felt so bad and, and he was weeping. And he said, that's what pain of Shem Yechai. And Rav Shem Yechai said, no. I'm not a miserable creature. You don't understand. I had an unbelievable time over there. We had an amazing time. Because he really touched a place where the Gashmi is the Kalimata. Obviously, being in a pit for 13 years ain't fun. I mean, even being there for six hours ain't fun. Right? And you're escaping Roman wrath. But because, I guess, he was in the state of Leviathan, so he was submerged in a source. He was submerged in a source. He was in a different consciousness. He said, that's what Rav Shem Yechai was so upset. He was so upset that you look at me and you say, Oi, he says, that's not the case. And he applied it to the Baal HaSimcha, which was very moving. Bart, or was that a Yisro? You always talk about the difference. Uh, 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 uh. No, it was uh, you know, a fascinating interpretation. Yeah, and that's the idea very well of the Avais that the Avais observed the whole Torah before it was given, not the Maisa. Not the Maisa, obviously. So many of the mitzvahs you couldn't observe the Maisa. But the Ruchnius of it, right? Like the Zoyar says, Yaakov put on tefillin with the sticks and so forth. V'zehu inyan san pirov shal halavyasa. This is also the concept behind the fins of the Levyasa. Hanikroyim flush Federin. If it was flush federin or? Huh? Fliss. Fliss means, like, flissic is swift, right? Fleisic. Learning fleisic means to steig with swift. So fliss federin is like the feathers or the wings that allow you to fly. The wings of a fish are, of course, the fins. Rashi says in this week's parish of Shmini, right, there are two signs of a kosher fish, snapir and kaskesis. Fins and scales. So scales protect the fish. Snapir, the fins, snapirim, the fins allow, the Rashi says it's what allows the fish lushut behen. It swims in them. It literally, it's the wings that allow the fish to fly within the water to go from one space to another place, to another space. Those are the wings of the bird, of the fish, like similar to the wings of the bird. So some Peter Shalal of Yasun Hanikrayim, Fliss Federin. Federin are, of course, feathers, wings. Shebehem hushat min hakatsachuli. That is what the Leviathan employs in order to swim from one, one corner of, of, of the ocean to the other corner of the sea or the ocean. One side of the planet to the other side of the planet. V'lachein, and therefore, the Gemara says, Chazal say, ha'olam kuloi oimed ha'leviathan. There's a famous expression. That the whole world stands on the Leviathan. Shemakif Kalaim Kenoidim Bedivri Razal. The Leviathan encompasses the whole world, all the oceans. It's so titanic, it's so big. What's the meaning of this? So the Balatanya is saying what it represents is that the Leviathan, spiritually speaking, he's speaking on the level of Ruchnius, represents those tzaddikim that connect the whole world with the Ain Saif. They are like the link between heaven and earth because they're always connected to that place of Ruchni, and therefore the whole world stands on the Leviathan. The whole world stands on the Leviathan, and they encompass the whole world. And they could encompass the whole world, because the whole physical world becomes Tafel, it becomes Batal, Legabe, the very deep spiritual connection that these souls have. Ula Asid. Now when it comes to the future, HaLeviathan, Yasem Ulchamim, Sher Habar. We have now the Kinegia, the circus, the gladiator that the Chazal speak about in Medrash Rab, where the Leviathan is going to wage battle with the wild ox, the untamed wild ox, the Sher Habar, the ox that is outside the, the, the bar is like a wild, untamed, undomesticated. It's bar, it's outside. 
In the Meseches Beit, so we have Behemus Baisius and Behemus Midborius. There are Behemus that are home, homey, they're domesticated. Midborius means they're outside, they don't come home at night. So he says, it's going to be a battle with the Sherabar, Vishchetenu, Bishan Pirov. And the Medrash Rabbah says that Levyasin is going to slaughter the ox with its fins because of the sharpness of the fins. What does this mean? Now we go to the other category. This is another set of souls with a different type of avoid. And those are called the souls who are defined as Shor Habar. What's Shor Habar? Pnei Shor Mehasmoel. Generally, the face of the ox is on the left side. In the vision of Yecheskel, the face of the lion is on the right. The face of the left is on the, the face of the ox is on the left. Pnei Shor Mehasmoel. And every Shor down here is a reflection of the Pnei Shor. Smoel represents Gvura. In other words, there is restriction, there is concealment. Ela Shuhu Bar Vizach. But this is not a regular shur, it's a shur habar. And he touches here bar not only in the outside, like bar, bra, brais on the outside, but bar from the word borur, mvurur, boire, right? It's bar, it's clear, it's zach. Miyala bash, meharisham, yokon kotchen, the kichapayim, uvar leivov, uvar leivov. What's var leivov? We say it Sunday. A pure heart, an oizgil lighter to hearts. A refined heart, a heart that's mavura. So there's a shirt, and the shirt comes from smile, but it's bar vizach. What's the significance of this smile? Why is he emphasizing this? Because the point here is unlike the Levyasan. The point of smile is unlike the Levyasan, who is submerged in the source of life, which spiritually means is never ever detached from the divine source. Not only not detached, but there's no identity visible outside of the divine source. That's what Amad Eskasya means. It's completely concealed. What's concealed? The eye is concealed like the fish is concealed in the water, submerged in the water. That's the Leviasa. Always in a state of Dvekas. Always in a state of Dvekas. Shaira Bardas, we're going to see, are different souls. These are souls that battle. These are souls that live very much within the physical realm where there is a sense of detachment. And that's the difference between Amad Eskasya and Almadiz is Galia. Almad is Kasya means there's no sense of I. Almad is Galia means there is a sense of I, and now I have to struggle to find God. I have to struggle to find this truth of life. I have to struggle to find my soul. It's a whole completely different Avaida. To purify it, right? So he says it's a Shur, it's a Behemoth, but it's Bar, Vizach. And in Halacha, there's also a tremendous difference between. The amphibious creature and the dry land creature in terms of food. Dagim, Meseches Chulin, those who are learning Meseches Chulin know that Lahalacha, Dagim don't need any Shechita. They need what's called Asifa. That's how the Gemara learns it out. But Parshas Baloischa, right? The Yasfulahem, Geayam, the only thing Dagim needs is Asifa. You have to take it out of the water and it's kosher. I, the dog died this way, this way. It's not negate, there's no Nevela. That's the halacha of a poem. There's a discussion about it in the Chazal. But the halacha dogim don't need anything to make it suitable for Jewish consumption. When it comes to a bird, you need shechita at least in one simon between the two, uh, the two vital organs, the, 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 the kana and the veshed, the food pipe and the windpipe, the windpipe and the food pipe, the esophagus and the trachea, you need shechita at least in one. When it comes to a shor, when it comes to a behemoth, like a bull, an ox, a behemoth, a sheep, a goat, these domesticated animals that are kosher. And Parsha Shmini, you need with two simonim. Two simonim. The Gemara explains because it's not zotir chayuse, it's not a small chayus, it's an intense chayus. What's the idea of shechit, as we'll soon see? There's a process that's necessary, a very intense process necessary, to sublimate it from the min hachai to the min hamedaber. Because that's what eating means, sublimating it from the animal species to the human species. So that's the concept that it's a shur, but it's bar v'zach. Ki hinein, gam avedosam begmai sagashimus. Because there avoide, even there avoide within the physical world. Come on, back to our marshal. V'samachta b'chagecha de yom tev. When it says by yom tev, v'samachta b'chagecha, which is just one example of a mitzvah of simcha. So you would think, where is simcha? Simcha is an emotional experience. Simcha is a spiritual experience. Comes the Gemariam Psachim, Dav Kuftes, and tells us, Arvei Psachim, ain't simcha, elabibasar. No, 
There's no simcha only through basa or vein simcha la biyayin. Time of the base hamikdash, they were makruv, like you said in the beginning of the Maimer, shalmi simcha and yomtif, and you ate that, and that's how you were makayim besamachta bechagech. So he says, what's the pshat of this? Einoi kipshutoi. Don't see it as literally what the Chazal mean is sheyoichal psar hasher l'malo is bitnoi chas v'sholem v'yoses boy. That what's the definition of simchas yomtiv? What did you have, Dr. Mishal, you could show this to your patients. What's the definition of simchas yomtiv? That you eat a lot, a lot of steak. That's what we call psar hasher. Better rib steak. And if it's filled with some other stuff, it's not besser. But he didn't know about that at that time. Lamala is bitnei chas v'shalom, so that the stomach becomes as full as possible. And his expression on this is chas v'shalom, God forbid. V'yos is boy, and they're not hyped on tansen. There's an expression, sisu bnei mei sisu, right? You clap your stomach, and you say, ah, ah, ah. And some other things happen in the process, and you say, this is called a good yomtif. He says, that's not what the chazal mean, ain't simcha elevavasar. That their only way of understanding simcha was with their stick basa. If you're not going to have that, what's simcha? This is called simcha. It's called depression. For this, you could starve. <laughs> what do you have there? Steak? So early in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Since that's not the vart. Ella. And not just, and not just because. It's not, I just want, it's not just a spirit, it's not a spiritual insight coming from a tzaddik who wasn't so into food, that's also true. But it's also true about simcha. We all know that a person cannot get happy from eating a very, very big meal to the point that they're stuffed because they ate a lot of meat and they can't breathe anymore. Uh, it's not a cause of simcha. I've still, to meet a person that when you ask them, are you a happy person? a really happy person, and they say, absolutely, I eat steak every night or once a week, and I am a happy person. Especially for Jews, I've never seen that work. It's good for a few minutes, but that's not what simcha is. Elamai. So what did the Gemara mean? Ela, the Gemara meant something much deeper. Chines halois. And the raya for this is, the Gemara says, that it's only when they ate shalmei simcha. If it's a shtik basar, What's wrong with Basa that's not a carbonus? Now you don't say in Simcha of a anymore. Why? What happened? What happened? If it's the Basar, Basar is Basar. A piece of steak is a piece of steak. The Pshat is, it's not the Basar. El Abchin is Halayas. It was the sublimation of the meat. Ke'inyan shalme Simcha me Basar Gashme. Just like when they brought the carbonus of Shlomim, which were called Shalme Simcha. In the time of the Beis Hamikdash, from physical flesh, Shahayu Bismancha Beis Hamikdash, Shahayu Reach Nichayach Mamish Lashem, and he puts in the word Mamish. Reach Nichayach Lashem says in Chumash many times. Puts in the word Mamish. That the why does he put in the word Mamish? That the physical Basar became a Lakus. That's Simcha. When you take your Basar, when you take your body, when you take your flesh, your physicality, and you align it with the ultimate truth. That's where simcha comes from. And ain't simcha, elevabasa means that there's no simcha in this world. When you're living in this world, the only way I could have simcha is if I deal with my basa. If I deal with my basa, if I confront my basa, if I elevate my basa. Because this is who I am. If I ignore my body, I ignore my basa, and my simcha is only coming from mind stuff or spiritual stuff, it's not going to be a permeating, penetrating simcha. Simcha must come from alignment of mind, soul, and body. So Rashbi couldn't have that simcha. He was deprived of that. In the Maida, yeah. No basar. <laughs> Which doesn't only mean no physical meat. It means in his own life, he wasn't in a state of basar. He was in a state of levyasa. Of course, relatively speaking, he was still in the physical world. That's why he needed a carob tree and he needed water. But relatively speaking, like the others before Matan Taylor, there was no mitzvah to eat basar. They may have eaten basar. Uh, he brought for the malachim uh, gimel l'shaynas mechardel, three uh, three tongues and mustard. But the mitzvahs weren't defined by the physical world. Why weren't the mitzvahs defined by the physical world? Because their way of relating to Hashem was primarily within a spiritual experience. The mitzvahs begashmi is though that we have from Atan Torah. Most of them deal dafka with gashmis. 
I give tzedakah with physical money and a physical check, and trumas and maishas with physical grain, and tefillin with the height of an animal. Why? Let's just meditate in the morning, like many people do meditation. That's not the mitzvah of tefillin. Mitzvah of tefillin, I need the physical height of an animal and wrap it on my physical arm and on my physical head. The same is true with tzitzis. I need to fleece the wool of the sheep that I use for tzitzis with the fringes that come down. That's the mitzvah of talus and the mitzvah of tzitzis. We understand that by the Gemara of the Gemara of the Gemara of the Gemara Yeah. Says yeah. Words. Before that, you had the the kavanas of nit the Torah and now it's yeah. attached to yeah. Joshua. Yeah. 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 And even the mitzvah of tefillah, the mitzvah of kriyashma, the mitzvah of berachas hamazon, the Gemara says in brachas, "Hiru lav kedibur dami." That's the halacha. Thinking is not like words. After articulated with words, why? Thinking is much better. You're more involved. The answer is that the physical, concrete manifestation, the Gemara says, "Akima svas of havemaisa." The moving of the lips is called Maisa in Halacha. It's Maisa Zuta. It's called Maisa Zuta in Halacha. But it's Akima Svas of Hava Maisa. So the articulation verbally of something with the lips is already bringing it down to a more physical space. So ain't Simcha Eleba Basar. A person should not look at their Basar and see it as an obstacle to Avoid Hashem. The beauty of this is no, this is not your obstacle. This is your path to Avoid Hashem. Never look at your instincts, your appetites, your addictions, your physical cravings that are created because you're a person of flesh and blood, as we say, basar, ashtik basar, right? Ashtik basar. And you look at it as a great obstacle to avoid this Hashem, as the great barrier to Ruchnis. No! If you're aliviyasa, you're aliviyasa. But generally we say, ain simcha elab basar. The way you're going to re- achieve simcha, what simcha? Simcha is the ultimate connection with Hashem. The source of joy, the source of pleasure is elev basar. Only by dealing with your basar, by elevating your basar, by working with your basar, by finding the, the sparks within your basar, by understanding that your f- flesh is not evil, that even though you look at yourself or you even call the behema, that behema is your precious cargo. Because that is what becomes the reyach nichayach l'ashem. God wants your behemah. The behemah is, that's what he says, reyach nichayach mamash l'ashem. It's not a joke that they took the fat of the carbon, they put it on the mezbeach, and vaitig a guy in. Reyach nichayach, it becomes elokus. It becomes elokus. The shayr becomes ashtig gatl chayt. Reyach nichayach. Hashem says, what a pleasant, beautiful aroma. What's pshat a beautiful aroma? It was the smell of the basar. It means that there's nothing like the tainug of the halah of Gashmis. That's the vart, the moira de kavart. There's no smell as pleasing as the smell, the reyach, of the halah, of the sublimation of the Gashmi to the ruchni. So what we look often as the Gashmi, and it's a, eh, it's, it's a struggle, and if I wouldn't have to deal with it, I would be much better off. And these are, every person in their own life, you have your appetites, your instincts, your cravings, your addictions, your temper, your midas, that all come from the bosses. Pnei shermi asmoel. It's the behemoth in me, the, the, whether, whether I have a domesticated animal or some of us have an undomesticated animal within us. And that often becomes a tremendous source of distraction. And it's not talking necessarily, some people it's about aggression. Other people it's about insecurities. You know, some of us are dealing with big bulls that we have to deal with with horns. It's called shert hamuads. And some of us are shert tams, Right? And some of us have other issues. We're like ants. We're little ants. Or we're little animals, scared, frightened. Whatever the issue is, I have my basa to deal with. And my simch is going to come only through, only through the halah, through the working with the basa. And that could become a reich nechayich l'ashem. And that's what we mean when we speak about the souls of Sher Habar and Simcha Babasa. He says, not pshat, I filled up my stomach with meat and I walk around and say, wow, this was a good yomtev meal. <laughs> Sher Habar seems to me like it's a wild shore of life. life, life, life exactly. Right? But uh, on the Mizbeh, bring on the domesticated thing. Don't bring it. Wild. Why? Any shayr, I mean, if it was a shayr, it was kasha for a carbon. And we bring bison as a carbon? Why not? Deer, bison. Deer not. Deer, not. Deer is a different species. There's three categories of animals that were mutter, which was a shayr, an ox, 
and a kevis, a sheep, and a goat. With all the age, you know, you had the calf and a cow and an ox and a ram and an older goat, a younger goat. But it's all those those three species. And then you had a few types of birds, the ter and the bnei yayna. Basically, only five types of living species were allowed as carbonus. Only five types. Wild, wild, wild shots. Well, practically, you know, uh, practically, if it's a problem, I mean, obviously, usually they were domesticated. But in, in terms of qualities of kashros, it's fine, yeah? If the simcha is only coming from subjugating the chaser to... I didn't use the word subjugating, by the way, yeah? Sometimes you got to subjugate too, but just... No, no, subjugating is good if it's a tool to sublimate. Very important. This is from KSEOIL English. It's not for you. <laughs> subjugate means to... Uh, to be, uh, to dominate, like to control, like you subjugate the skafia. Oh, yes, first taste. And you uh, see Yiddish. And sublimate is a sapcha. First taste. So you need medafa skafia. Medafa skafia. If the simcha is only coming from the sublimation, yes. The bus, though. Yeah. Why is it only a young and not like every day of the year? Well, simcha. Simcha is negaya every day of the year. We say every morning, Yivdu es Hashem b'simcha, and Avoid es Hashem is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So people, somebody once interviewed me on a radio show, and he tried to prove to me that Reb Nachman of Breslov was the one who invented the idea that you have to be always b'simcha. Mitzvah g'doyla, it's a Breslov, it's a Breslov concept. I said, ech nicht. Reb Nachman of Breslov spoke a lot about Simcha, <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, there's a Pasuk, Ivdu as Hashem Simcha in Tehillim, which is a little before Breslov, and we say it every morning in Davening, and it's a capital Tehillim, and uh, the David HaMelech believed that Avodah Hashem is not once a year, Avodah Hashem is by Simcha, Avodah Hashem is when? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And the Rambam says at the end of Hilchus Lulav, the end of Hilchus Lulav, the last halacha, the Ramam says, Hasimcha she yismach ha'odam basiyas ha-mitzvahs or b'avoydas ha-keil is avoyda g'doyla b'ma'oyd. And he said it's one of the greatest avoydas there are. The Ram, this is a Rambam. <laughs> the Rambam was also before Breslov. Not only that, the Rambam teaches in the toichicha of Parshas Kisavoy, what's the whole toichicha? Tachas ha-shaloy avadatos ha-shem ha-lekecha b'simcha v'tuv le'vav me'roiv ko'il. Rashi teaches talk a different. You didn't serve Hashem in good times. But the Rambam teaches talk levad Hashem why you served God. But it was with depression, with melancholy. So shver to zayin ayid, right? He used to say. So shver to zayin ayid. What's different? Oh, so that's my point. So if you think about Yom Tov, Yom Tov is just there's times of the year that we celebrate a certain quality. But the point is it should, be, it should have our spa for a whole year. Pesach is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. But every day you mention you teach me something. Shavuos is matan Torah, but every day you learn Torah, right? That's why you're here. You understand the point. So yes, it's, it's certain moments. Yom Kippur is tshuva, but tshuva is not only Yom Kippur. Every day is tshuva. Every day I do should do tshuva. Kolimar says kol yom halav, kol yom of b'tshuva. So emela, this is the avoid of the simcha. Val derech zeh who simcha b'psar yom tiv. So even the part you could say, okay, that's the part that goes up on the mizbeach. But there's a part that a person is eating. He says ena chenami. There's a part that a person is eating. But this is the same nekuda. Kamay shikasuv. That's what we say in davening. What's the lashon in Shmei Nesra? V'yismachu v'cha kol yisrael makatchish mecha. The simcha doesn't come from steak. The simcha comes v'yismachu v'cha kol yisrael makatchish mecha. V'chayit it's a stira. By davening, you say the simch is in you. And by the meal, you say the simch is from the chaloptus, from the stuffed cabbage. Chaloptus, you know what they are, Ibn Yes. I didn't know for many years because I didn't grow up uh, this. But I learned. So what do we say by davening? Stuffed cabbage. Stuffed cabbage. You know the stuffed cabbage with the meat inside? Yeah. So what do we say by davening? They should rejoice in you because all simcha comes from when you could connect with your true inner core and the true inner core of reality, there's simcha. Then things are open. There's no there's transparency. 
the basar is not a steerer to the Yismuch That's the Nakuda. Bechadaika. Elo shaloshim bakasha. Today we see it as a bakasha the Yismuch It should be mnei shechad of beis mikdashenu. And as a result of that, there's no shalmi simcha. Meaning, this is a great challenge to be able to be maila. Elevate the basar on that level. V'zeh nikra shayr habar. This avoid is called shayr habar. Mipnei miloshin bar levov. From Tehillim. Right, Miyala Bahar Hashem. Who's going to come up to the mountain of God? Neki Chapaim. You have to have clean hands, Ubar Levov, and a pure heart. Like we say Yom Tif and Shabbos, V'tahir Libenu La'av Dacha Ba'emes. V'tahir Libenu. When you say these words, Trach Stamol V'gendavet, V'tahir Libenu La'av Dacha Ba'emes. Ah, Reb Shalom. V'tahir Libenu La'av Dacha Ba'emes. We ask the Reboi Neshulayim, my heart should be pure, Bar Levov. There shouldn't be politics in my heart, corruption in my heart, manipulation in my heart, entanglement, lies, deception. It shouldn't be a crooked heart. It should be a pure heart. Arena hearts. That's what a Jew asks for. Shabbos and Yom Tov. Bar Levav. Pidish. Bosor Zach Ubar. The Bosor, the Shoy, the Ax. It's refined and pure. The Hainu, what's Pshat? Simchel Hashem anoyled mizeh b'nish b'eish v'islavos. Pshayr Habar means the Simcha that's born from the Basar. And what type of Simcha is it? It's always one of fire and passion. Because that's what an animal is about. What characterizes animals is passion. Right? As the Balatanya often says, you see passion in animals much more than in people. Right, if you ever look in the, you go to the jungle or you see documentaries of the jungle, the passion, you know, that look in the eyes when they're pursuing their prey, or whatever they're doing, there's just a certain explosion of emotion and intensity, that intensity, it's obviously animalistic, you know, they focus on one thing, self-preservation, that's their focus, self-preservation, and you got to propagate the species, got to be there for the kinderlach, Right? And they help their environment in their own way. They, they, they increase the balance of the ecosystem. Those are the three agendas of every animal. They don't have other agendas. Self-preservation, feed the kids and protect them, and do what you got to do to protect your environment. If we would only have those three agendas, we wouldn't be so bad off. <laughs> Problem is we have Meshuggah dreams, huh? By eating the from the animal, don't we get their characteristics? Yeah, we do get their characteristics by eating their basa, which is according to many of the Mefarshim, Rishonim, and Acheroinim, that Barbanel speaks about it, the uh, Maharal, and many others, the Klayokar, the reason for Simone Kashros, according to them, and there's different interpretations, but one of them is because we are what we eat, and that's not only a cliche, and we know today, everybody knows how much food affects them within a few minutes, you even know it from your moods, right? I know if I eat a piece of cake in the morning... A little piece mail if I eat a bigger piece of cake in the morning, I'm in a depression around eight minutes later. Uh, if I eat it in the afternoon, I'm also in a depression. <laughs> but uh, it's not like in the morning. Huh? In the evening, yeah, Kegei Shlofen. So we know that, and it's not just, it's not a mystical thing. It's very practical because our bloodstream, our, our, our physiological makeup is so deeply affected by the food we eat. So yeah. According to Torah, the food we eat affects our characteristics. It affects our chemicals, our makeup. It affects our neuron. It literally affects our makeup. Huh? Yet we're not vegetarians. What? And yet we're not vegetarians. We're not vegetarians. And that's what we're saying. Ain't simchel of a bossa. That in this world, I have to deal with my bossa. And that's a very important yesoid. The Baal Shem Tov once said... Parshas Mishpatim, a half the kavort, and it was—it's a paradigm shift for many people. It could be a paradigm shift. Baal Shem Tov said, "Kisire chamor seinacha, roivitz tachas masoi, v'chadalta me azov loy, azov tazav imoy." You see the donkey of your enemy crouching under its burden, and it's your enemy. So what do you say? Have a good day. Baruch Hashem, God is paying you back. Why should I help him? I have busy things to do. So it's an issa. You have to go and help him. Take off the burdens from the donkey. Let the donkey stand up. Even though the man who owns the donkey is your enemy. 
Ah. Uh, your time is not on the donkey. Your time is on, on the man. Yeah, it's hard to hate a donkey. I mean, unless you're really, really... Uh, unless you're a donkey maybe yourself, yeah. The Gemara in Psachim, Kofiud Gil, wants to know, what, what do you mean you hate someone? Why do you hate somebody? Why, the Gemara wonder, what, what, come on, why is he your sign now? <laughs> the Gemara had a hard time understanding. Why do you hate somebody? <laughs> and you know what the Gemara answers, yeah? Because you saw that he's over the Vedas. <laughs> and you can't say to bed, Bezdin can't take care of it because there's no Adis, whatever. I got some ice over there. <laughs> the Gemara finds up some way. We're gonna, it's an Arvip Psachim, we're going to get there soon. Bezer Rashad. Al will call him, so the Baal Tov said like this. Kisire Chamoir is the same letters like Chaimer. When you're going to see your own Chaimer, your own physicality, and you're going to discover Sainacha, sometimes it's the greatest enemy of your soul. You want to daven, and the body says, no, let's go to sleep. You want to come learn in the morning, the body says, let's go to sleep. Sainacha, it hates your Neshama. So what do you say? Hashem gave the goof a burden. He's not interested. He crouches. I'm not interested. Take your burden and give it to somebody else. The oil I told is not for me. I don't want to go with it. It's like crouch. You know when you're Ravitz, you become a couch potato, literally. A crouch potato. So there's a derech in Yiddishkeit. What do you do? You crush the body. This was known as the derech of Tainius and Sigufim. By great people, it's not a derech of small people. Tiniest and Segufa men, there were people that a whole year they would crush their body. It was basically like, Mamash, take a slave, like they did in the South, unfortunately, and beat him. Beat him, beat him, beat till he has no opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like some people do in, in marriages and with employees. You, you take away from them any um, personality. Some people do it with children. I crush you completely until you don't have an opinion, and then you're a wonderful, wonderful person, yeah? Like the t-shirt, I'm very easy to get along with once you learn to worship me. As long as you worship me, I'm very easy. I'm, I'm the best boss in the world. Just don't have another opinion, and then we're good. So there was such a derech with the goof. You take the goof, and after a while, it gets, it gets the message. People do it with their animals. They do it with their puppies. They do it with their elephants in the circuses. They would beat them. Animals get the message. I don't want to be beaten. So what happens? I shut my mouth. To the point that the gulf, you let it survive because you need it. But that's it. Another derech is, I'm adding now, another derech is, because the Bashanda was talking about serious, serious avoida. The Wachasid de Ashkenaz. Tiniest and Segufim was a serious thing. Today's the other They say that he passed the Melech. There's another Indian, and I think this is more what people understand today. The Chadal means you ignore your guf. It's not part of the equation. And Jews are very good at this because Jews, Baruch Hashem, have good minds, at least many of them. So you retreat in your minds. I grew up in a yeshiva, yeah? I don't remember even one teacher ever saying you have to take care of your body. The main thing was the mind, learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And it produced some great scholars, Talmud Chachamim. But in terms of physical awareness, oh my God. The Chadal what where does the goof come in? The goof is it's such a nuisance. Yeah, you got to deal, you got to deal. So you see cake, you eat, whatever you do, you got to do. But it's not integrated. So Baal Shem Tov says, this is how we finish it. He says, Loi bezu derech yishken oir ha not in this way will the light of Torah dwell in you. You have to pick up the chamor. You have to lift up the chamor. Not, not become a victim of the superficiality of the guf. But really the guf is waiting for birur. It's waiting for zichoch. That's called shayr habar. That's called bar v'zach. Yeah. He wasn't, the Hashem wasn't only endorsing good health, he was saying something much deeper. He was saying that in the ultimate vision of Judaism, the spiritual and the physical must be perfectly aligned. That's what he was saying. Not only endorsing good health. Everybody endorses good health. It says, You're not allowed to harm your body. He was saying something much deeper than that. He was saying that in the ultimate vision of Judaism, God is not about heaven. You understand? It's about a complete alignment between the two. 
like everything, it has to be with balance and delicate. You have to be delicate because there's also the opposite approach where a person becomes completely body conscious, there's nothing else. You know, the body can become an Avoy de Zara. For some people, the body is an Avoy de Zara. It becomes literally an idol. And Gashmi's becomes an Avoy de Zara. Then it's the exact opposite of what he was saying. That's what we mean by Shayr Habar, to be Mazachichet. Yeah. You're born in Leviathan. So a Leviathan is born that way. You're not. You're, you're not so you need to. Perhaps a Leviathan is born that way, or there's certain people that are maybe inclined to it. And even within every soul, there's moments of Leviathan, there's experience of Leviathan. But generally speaking, most souls are in the Pchin of Sher Habar. That's what it seems you, like. You're not, you're not intended to change. You're not intended, you're not intended no. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's talking, yeah. When we say tzaddikim here, we're talking about every Jew. He uses the word tzaddikim because he's, just, he's speaking about the, the Jew who maximizes his calling. When we hear, it's another mistake. When people read in Sifarim of Chassidus, Noyam Ali Malach, it's called Sifran Shal Tzaddikim. When they read the word tzaddikim, it's right away they think about the Libnitzer Rebbe. Yeah? And they miss the whole point. The Libnitzer Rebbe was a very big tzaddik. <laughs> That's, he was very, but when it says in this one the word tzaddikim, it's talking about you. <laughs> it's talking about you. If it's not talking about you, you're missing the point. It's talking about you in your full potential. Am I going to be a tzaddik like that tzaddik? I don't, I can't be a tzaddik like that tzaddik, but I can be a tzaddik like, like me. <laughs> like, that, like Reb Zusha said, like his brother said, yeah. Like Reb Zusha said. I I'm not gonna. They're not gonna ask me why I'm not Moshe or Avram. I'm not Moshe or Avram, but why are you not Zusha? So when we say the word tzaddik, what it just means is somebody who, who lives, who lives up to his ultimate potential. Yes, there are the tzaddikim who embody that in a very powerful way to inspire many others. But don't detach yourself from the word tzaddik because then you're missing the point. tzaddik. Your mother was right. tzaddik. That's what we struggle with. Some, of, some people called us behemoths and others called us tzaddikim. So in this mind, the Balatanya is trying to make peace between the two. <laughs> that what your mother called you and what your teacher called you, they really meant the same thing. Just your mother used the word tzaddik and your teacher used the word behema. And some teachers used the word chaya. Yeah. I want, it's just synonyms, right? I had, a, I had a teacher once, he turned to the class, he was upset. And he said, I'm greater than the Maharal. This is where I get my self-confidence. He said, I'm greater than the Maharal. The Maharal had one goylem. And I have 19 goylems. And he says, he's even greater. The Maharal's goylem didn't speak. And my goylems all speak. <laughs> See, we also had brilliant pedagogues by us. You're not the only one who had brilliant pedagogues. Huh? Who, a goylem? No. <laughs> Okay, so let's finish here the few lines. Ella, Ella, Sha'af al despite this, Milse Zutra Sehi, Legabi Hilu Chanifla Shalat Sadikam Anikrayim Levios. It's half of a fella. Despite this tremendous avoida, it's considered small, Legabi, the wondrous movement of the Tlevyosans. You can't compare this growth and this growth. Because here all the growth is coming from a gashmi, which is finite. Their motion should With them, one flight, which is cold, is cold and nachas, serene. They reach tremendous heights. So it's infinitely higher than the first Avedah. The first Avedah, I'm dealing with Basar. Because I'm dealing with Basar, everything is Pamelech, Pavolia. You're dealing by, by, by definition with something that's a Balgvul. So the growth is incremental. The growth is slow. It's step by step. Because you're struggling. The Leviathan, Sha still, quiet, serenity. There's no fire because we spoke about what, what creates noise? Friction. What creates passion? Overcoming something. That's what creates passion. You're excited because, wow, it's new, it's different, it's novel. When you're completely submerged in the source, shah, still, quiet, complete serenity. And in that, 
the Leviathan can fly from Madregas that are completely in Shaloi Be'erich, the Tzadikim of Sher Habar. You can't even compare. Here the growth is Bedove Gashmir Balgavol. And if you want a marshal for this, this marshal comes from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, it's the chess game. Life is a chess game, and you have the queen, and you have the bishop, and you have the knight, and you have the castle, and then you have the pawn. Right? So the king represents Hashem. The queen represents Knesset Yisrael in its source, Malchus, which is the feminine part of the king. Then you have Shrafim, Chayez, Vaifane, Akoidish, three levels of Malachim, Bria, Yitzir, Asiya, which fly around like the birds fly, Oifya, Oifiv, like the dogim fly with the wings. And you have it's represented in the knight, in the horse, and in the castle, and in the bishop. And then you have the Neshama down here in Aguf as a pawn. Step by step by step. You can't skip. You can't skip. You go one step and you get knocked off right, left, and center. You can't fly over things. You're not a flyer. You're a walker. You're a mahalach. Steady. You can't also go diagonal and jump here and jump here and go this way and that way. Step by step through the board of life. You're also short. You're small. You're in the front lines of the battle. There's a lot of you. And you get knocked off constantly. Nobody gets knocked off like the pawn. And it's incremental. But, but, there's a but. When you get to the other side, you become a queen. The castle, the castle can't become a queen. <laughs> or anything you want. Till a queen. So he says, I can't, the king not. He said in Yiddish, but the is done nor ene. The kenig is not. But the queen, which is one with the king, intimacy. The Rebbe said this at a Fabrengen on Shabbos. Sitting in the crowd was a man named Sam Reshevsky. Sam Reshevsky was one of the top chess champions of America on Bobby Fischer level. And he played tournaments with the Soviets in the early 1950s. Tournament with the Soviets, but then the Soviet Union in America, you know, was. It was Levyasim with the Sher Habar, not only with Sadikim, but, you know, it was a gladiator. So he played against Russia, Sam Reshevsky, and he once came uh, from bringing Shabbos to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So the Rebbe did a whole sicha about chess, a whole sicha about chess in Avoid Hashem. And he went. Uh, yeah, he was playing then, I think, a tournament before this in the Soviet Union. I'll call upon him. What's the point here? You can't compare the two types of avoiders. The Leviathan flit, and here it's a completely different mahalach because it's, you're encumbered, you're, you're obstructed, because even with this alias, but it's coming from a gash, it's coming from a gvul. That's, what the, that's the arena in which you're dealing with. You're dealing in an arena of gvul. So that's why the Leviathan is going to Shech the Shair Habar. What does this represent? So this we'll see later. Okay. Ah. And some chalab a bossa. Can I always bring in the bossa? Reb Shalom. How interesting to get my bring in bossa. When a person, when a person is stronger, when a person is stronger, there's addiction. Ah. When a person is stronger, there's addiction. It's the greatest symbol. Yeah, the greatest simcha is when you're stronger than your addictions. Being stronger regardless. Very good. Being, st- being sober regardless. Basa being sober regardless. Givaldic. If you're, if you're eating a piece of food or something that's, that's not good for you, how can you conceptually make a bracha on it? You're saying that the bracha is bringing up the goodness of it, but, but... You should have eaten that. If you're really going to make a bracha, then you're probably, and the bracha is real, you're probably not going to eat food that's not good for you. <laughs> I shouldn't speak, but that's probably the truth. The Balatanya was once talking about the Arba Ovis Nezikin. What's the Arba Ovis Nezikin? Hashoir, Haboir, Hamave, Vahever. The first Mishnah of Abakama describes four archetypes of damagers your ox, your animal. It could be a bull, it could be a dog, it could be a ape. Boy is a hazard, right? You dig a pit. 
You leave a suitcase in the airport and people trip over it. Hamave is not clear. Heve is fire, right? You send out a virus to other computers. It's Heve. You light a fire and it's a fart. What's Mava? So the Gemara argues there's two shittas. Mava Adam or Mava is shame. Adam means a person damages, yeah? Somebody punches, uh, punches you in your nose. Somebody breaks your glasses. That's Adam Amasik. And shame is the tooth of an animal. Basically, you send an animal to somebody's field, goes in the field, and eats up, eats up his, his tomatoes, grapes. You have to pay for it. Yeah. So he was explaining all the Ovis Nezikin. So it says in Arizal, that was which is very strange, what's the Shaykhs. So he was explaining all the four in a person's Avoida. Yeah, so he said what the Shoyd is, what the Boyd is. Very interesting, what Mav is, what Hever is. Very different forms of Nezikin. The Nezik of Shoyd is aggression. Yeah. The Nezik of Boyd is depression. The opposite, depression. You're just like an empty pit. There's nothing here. That's the Nezik of Boy. Yeah. Nezik of Hever is anger, temper. Yeah. Then they spoke about the Nezik of Mava. So the Nezik of Adam is, it's coming from your intelligence. You think you're better than other people and you can manipulate them. Then they asked about him, what's Shane? <laughs> so this is his definition. He said, Emachta <laughs> Bracha, he makes a bracha. Nonetheless, he can just eat like a, like an animal. He says that's the hezek of shein. The two. He makes a bracha. You just said baruch adar shem lekeinu malachai lam vi esser chazay. He says I makht a bracha on the nach esser. Ah? The makht a bracha vi esser. The hest esser. I'm sure, I'm not sure this. In other words, you know, there's a nigan S and S. This nigan was made for the shame of the Balatanya. So, S. He wasn't complaining that a person eats. You have to eat. So, S. You have to eat. Is it how you eat? Is it like, is it your... Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I become the food. The food doesn't become me. That's the difference. There's two ways of eating. The food becomes me, or I become the food. Yeah. If you make a real bracha, and you're there, and the food is not good, you're not going to eat it. I mean, you have to eat something, because you made a bracha. <laughs> the body you hear? A pawn can become a queen. Uh, a castle can become a queen. You used to over here. His daughter used to work. Reshevsky, yeah? I met his daughter. Yeah, she came once uh, to top, yeah? Sam, Sam Reshevsky was a good chess champion. He was a good chess player, yeah? He was, I think, in 1955. This this, this Fabregen was, I think, 1948, in the end of the 40s. But he was 1955 in a tournament in the Soviet Union. And uh, it wasn't going well. And this was 1955. And he, he said the story. Sam Ryshevsky, and he asked him for a break and because, you know, they were honoring him. And he went and he called up the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Fabrocha. <laughs> 1955. He said he won. <laughs> That's what he said. He said the story himself. Sam Ryshevsky, yeah. Half thing in 1984, I saw a letter the Lubavitcher Rebbe wrote to him. Wrote to him. And asked him, I think it was to him or another treasure, asked him to go visit Bobby Fischer. Bobby Fischer was a chess champion, a Jew, self-hating Jews, beyond, you know, the real, like Jews know how to hate themselves, like, you know, Noam Chomsky uh, level, Norman Finkelstein level, I mean, you know, the, no Jews are anti, nobody could be an anti-Israel. <laughs> and Bobby Fischer was, and he, got, he went into a depression. He was in isolation. He was a world-renowned self. They said he was sick. Out of the blue, it was fascinating to me that Lubavitcher Rebbe writes a letter to Sam Ryshevsky and says, because you're a chess champion, you could probably get into him and go try to help him out. It was a half the dicker thing. That's when I saw the Rebbe had his pulse on people and situation. 
How did the Rebbe even know? Ah, no, California, he retreated into some cocoon and he went into a depression. Who cared? Who knows? Um, another multimillionaire went into a depression. So he had the talk. Multimillionaires. And he was a self hating Jew. He wasn't a psa. He wasn't a psa. He was a asking for, 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 for Yiddishkeit, for Kert. Ozef Tazavimah, yeah. For the Rebbe, that was Ozef Tazavimah, yeah, the Yid. But it was a half ludicrous thing. He wrote, you ever saw the letter? A long letter. He writes to somebody on the bottom, P.S., I'm sorry for mixing in, but if you could, then he asks him if he could travel to California. I think he even wrote, I have to remember, I have to, I have to, that if there's any expenses with the ticket, he'll pay for it. Because he wanted, he should make a trip specially and go to Bobby Fisher, to, supposed to be Mechazakim, to help him come out of his... Uh, it was a half thing. Published letter? No, I saw it many years ago. I think maybe uh, she showed it to me or somebody showed it to me, Rashevsky. Yeah. It's a half thing. That's why the name Lubavitcher Rebbe is really not so massive for the Rebbe. Well, part of him was also he was the Rebbe of the Lubavitch movement, but much of his work had very little to do with... Uh, classic Lubavitch chassidim or Lubavitch movement or Lubavitch institutions. Bobby Fischer was not a contributor to Lubavitch Moistus. He was not a contributor to Jewish Moistus. He was a... Huh? He was, he, it was very hard for him to say he was a Jew. He, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bobby Fischer was Jewish. In 1948, he played against Soviets. 48? In 1948? No, no. No, no. Yeah. He's he. You know, he's a chess. He's a chess. We have a chess. Uh, yeah, yeah. We have a chess champion here. Yeah. We have a replica of every type of Jew in our shear. We have a caterer. We have lawyers. We have scientists. We have doctors. We have shoemakers. We have chalaymas, we have entrepreneurs with potentiality, etc. Huh? Goylems we don't have. It's a goylems. Shirabars. Luvyasan, who? Okay, we're looking, but okay. You, you, you. You're a stick of Luvyasan, that's the MS. You're a stick of Luvyasan. Avada, there's moments you're Leviosa, there's moments you're Sharabav. When you sit in the Mayan, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The truth is, when you sit in the Mayan, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You sit in the water, and the, and the, the Rambam says, What's a mikveh? So some people think a mikveh is 110 degrees. On the Zitz, on the West, on the. It's important yeah, the Baal Shem Tov says in Hilchus, the Baal Shem Tov, the Rambam says in Hilchus Mikvayis that a mikveh is Mei Hadaas Hatahir, the waters of pure knowledge. That's what the Rambam says. That's what a mikveh represents. Mei Hadaas Hatahir. That's why it has to be heavenly water, not filtered through human vessels, human constraint. So as Mizitz the Malan and Tlukud the Torah, even in a Hesa Mikveh, Mei Hadaas Hatahir. That's Leviosam. Lovyasin is in the water. Then you go out. Yeah, you go to the Shaira Bar. So it's both uh, both this. Uh, it takes, uh, <coughs> uh, takes another piece. Um, it, it attacks and conquers another, another piece. It's veering off the straight way. It's not going the straight way. It's veering off the straight way. It's, uh, it's not going gosh. Uh, the collision doesn't, doesn't it's not good. Good. I, I, The yid shouldn't attack another... You know, someone else attack another person or conquer another person. That's not the straight way to go. Right. Right. Beautiful, yeah. But that's the point that the buster must be a vehicle, not an obstacle. It's a very important idea. When people don't uh, don't are not aware of their bodies, their vehicles for Avoidas Hashem become damaged. It's like you'll say, ah, ah. It's it such a challenge with food because it has such a good taste. In the yes, food. yes, yes, yes. It makes you feel bad and eat too much. Yeah, yeah. 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 
I once met somebody who fasted a lot. I said, why do you fast so much? He says, because I'd want to be happy. He says, I fast, I feel very good. It's hard for many of us to relate to it because the hunger pangs become so powerful sometimes that the food becomes the source of joy. But really, when, when you align the body with its own energy that it should eat only what it has to eat, it's, it's very unhappy when it eats food that it doesn't have to eat or too much because it's really you're stuffing it with things that it doesn't, it doesn't deserve. It's like you're treating it. I was once, there was once food on a plate. And Kedarki B'Kaidish, I was eating it. And my wife said, I think you ate enough. Kedarka B'Kaidish, I think you ate enough. So I said, okay, but it's, <laughs> I'm hungry, whatever. So she said to me something very interesting. She said, you treat... She said, why don't you just throw it in the garbage? I said, it's good food. Why should I put it in the garbage? So she said, you treat the garbage can with much more respect than you treat your body. <laughs> you treat the garbage can with much more cover than you treat your body. Because <laughs> you have to take that big <laughs> Yeah, the problem is taking out the garbage is hard. But when you eat it, you become the garbage. Oh, sure. You become the garbage that you have to take out. That's even harder. For stays, better to take out the garbage than to become the garbage. We, you can, according to the Baal Shem Tev, and today I think it's very, very true everywhere, because the Baal Shem Tev's insights basically was a message for, for the whole generation. Chassidim and not Chassidim, it's not relevant. It's for everybody. It was the truth of the, of the moment. And that is, uh, today I don't think you can have real avoidus Hashem if the vehicle for Avodah Hashem is not fully in sync. I see with teenagers, with Bachrim, with kids, if the goof is not part of it fully, if it's not integrated, if it's not aligned, if you don't have body awareness and what your body needs to be aligned with your neshama, the Avodah Hashem becomes very temperamental, chaotic, moody. You have swings, you're up there and you're down there. It's not integrated, it's not consistent. The, today there can't be Avodah Hashem. That's what the Baal Shem Tov was saying. If the vehicle for Avodah Hashem, which is the goof, you can't serve God without the body. I can't learn, I can't daven, I can't do a mitzvah, can't learn a blad gemara without the goof. You need your brain, you need your goof and everything. And if it's not fully on board, fully on board, in a, in a, in a healthy way, in a good way, which means up ultimate health, uh, it's, 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 it's not going to work. The separation of Ruchnias from Gashmias in a person's life is not, it's, it's not viable today. I see in yeshivas where they sometimes don't allow the boys to run around. They need, kids need oxygen, right? Teenagers must have oxygen. Their brains are growing. And a lot of educators, they mean well. They don't understand that by taking them away from it, they won't be able to learn as well as they'll be able to because it's... Uh, it, their vehicles are being damaged. It's not a compromise, it's a mitzvah. That's the point, it's not a compromise. It's not like Nebuch, uh, you're physical people and you're troublemakers and you're narcissistic, so we're going to let you run around. It's not, it's not a compromise. That is, a, it's, it's part of Avoid Hashem. I think it's important stuff. My son was kicked out from Yeshiva, from one of the top Yeshivas in Shalom, because he felt what he had his body. Doesn't have to. It used to be uh, maintained. Moving. He was uh, he to go to the gym. He was caught going into mainstream. You know, and uh, he was, you know, we had a bottle for two years to survive in that yeshiva. Just he was treated so cruelly. He had a, such a taste for those yeshivas. I mean, he's phenomenal. He's a healer. He's a, he's a proper healer. I cannot take his system. It's sad that for, for some people feel that the system has to be one that alienates so many people who are more creative and, 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 and really have body awareness and need to nurture it. Like, that's, it's, 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 a pain, it's a tragic thing that people are so often forced to choose between, a, between the system and what they need for their own life. It shouldn't be that way. The system should be it should be accommodating to real needs of people. Okay. So. 
A second applause, a second applause. So Don Isser, Bal Toysef, Bal Toysef. I think she has a point. Yeah, yeah, it's a solid. Americans, uh, sports are Ameri it's American. The truth is, all kids need it, but some kids feel it much more. You know, their bodies are just, yeah, they, they just feel it. And it's, it's, to, to crush it and to tell them not to do it is not, it's not right. It's, today we know push it with all this, with, you know. There's so much research done about growth and development and brain development. It's not the... Uh... Uh, 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 well, to punish the kid, you take away the research and what? You, you make you learn now. <laughs> it's like a double... Uh... <laughs> right. That's, that's another mistake. The kid was antsy by learning because he needed recess. So now you take away the recess, he becomes even more crazy. And then you get angry and forced to learn when he needs to run Listen, the truth is that people, you know, they mean well. They, 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 just people use the tools that they know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't, I can't employ tools that I don't know how to use. So the tools that were given to me, I could give to others. So a lot of people haven't updated their training or their sophistication or their knowledge, so they just follow, you know, with the routines that they're familiar with. And we can only do things with the tools that we have. And some people don't know of other tools. They really don't know of other tools. They see things in one way, and if it fits, fine. If it doesn't fit, you just don't belong here. the guy with the Rosh Hashim, you spoke about that one told Noah, education. Uh, the Lomzhi Yeshiva, the Yaakov Naiman, Petach Tikva, the Yaakov Naiman. A Litvish Rosh Yeshiva. He was a good Machamach. Yeah? This class is brought to you by the Yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.